Okay, welcome back everyone. Day three of live coverage here in Las Vegas, exclusive coverage, Silicon Angles, the Cube of Amazon Web Services, huge event, reInvent, we're here, exclusive coverage. This is Silicon Angle, Wikibon's The Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and share that with you. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined again for day three with my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. Great research there. We've got a lot of videos up. We've been getting tons of text um, and tons of emails. Uh, we'll go to youtube.com slash siliconangle. Uh, this is kicking off day three. Uh, we are also running a crowd chat, Dave. Crowdchat.net slash reInvent. Go check it out. It's a live chat room, kind of like Reddit. Ask me anything, but it's for, for Twitter and LinkedIn. Go sign in and be part of the conversation. Ask us anything, ask our guest. Dave, uh, day three. Amazon is just rolling out a ton of announcements. Um, obviously, um, DynamoDB, big success. Redshift, big success. They're building on that and announcing new stuff. What's your take so far, day three? What are we expecting to see well, today? Well, we saw Werner Vogels last night. and uh, you know, He showed us a little leg. We heard the full announcement this morning. Uh, Amazon made a number of announcements. They've got a Postgres database as a service. Uh, they just announced a, a new uh, streaming service called Kinesis for uh, high volume uh, streaming data. Uh, high velocity uh, 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 financial data, for example, or they gave an example of ingesting the tweet stream and doing real-time analysis on that. Uh, they've also announced some instances that are optimized for high performance. The i2 uh, pre-announced is a high I.O. instance capability, and they've also optimized another compute instance with uh, new E5 cores and solid state disk. And John, what this is going to do, it's going to allow customers to take advantage of higher performance cores and optimi optimize compute instances which will mean they will potentially pay less on licenses. So we've done a lot of research on this for on-premise uh, installations, looking at optimizing uh, your infrastructure and reducing the number of cores uh, that, that, that you need and also reducing the, the number of, for example, Oracle licenses. Um, they've also done some, uh, some uh, regional replicas for high availability for uh, RDS. So you know, Amazon continuing to respond to customer demand and and build out capabilities. Uh, no, notice, uh, John, as well today that, uh, that Google made an announcement uh, dealing with uh, a problem that they've dealt with, uh, had for a while, dealing with live migration. So that's what's been going on here. Those are the announcements. Uh, anything you'd add to that? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things, Dave, I mean, you pointed out in great rundown of the announcements. So let's just break this down. Amazon is constantly innovating, and the thing that's interesting to me is just look at, if you, if you look at what they're doing, okay, you've got the managed services piece of the business. They are building on the fundamental um, uh, paradigm shift around API-based services. The world is moving to APIs, so you're seeing the app streaming thing. That's a managed service. You've called it an API economy. It's an API economy, mm -hmm. the data economy, the cloud economy. I just used that hashtag this morning, and we'll certainly have crowd chats all around these hashtags, but really, the key is, is that Amazon will continue to throttle announcements around uh, API-based services. So look for managed services. This streaming thing is really a big deal. That is absolutely what the marketplace wants. They want real-time information, real-time analytics. Underneath the managed services, you're seeing them constantly, incrementally improve around RDS. RDS for Postgres is a huge deal. It's just, again, checking the boxes, going down. It's a, you know, inch by inch, move the ball down the field, yard by yard. It's a little running game there. No big, no big movement, but again, they're making progress. First and 10, move the chains, as it's they the say. It's the West Coast it's offense it's of, uh, it's of power, cloud. power football for, for the cloud. And, right, and it so, doesn't remind you that San Francisco 49ers? Well, look, Stanford, the Stanford <laughs> Cardinal, I mean, Montana. You know, beat, beat Oregon, the big air show, you know? They, <laughs> Offensive explosion last week. Uh, yeah. I don't <laughs> but again, RDS, again, incremental improvement. That's, that's a ground game for them. And they're going to continue to do that. And then ultimately underneath that, you're seeing red, Redshift and DynamoDB. To me, those are the big uh, home runs. You mentioned some of the instant stuff, constant improvement on the scale side. So there's really three sections of innovation for Amazon. Under the hood, that's improvement to the infrastructure, regional snapshots, big, that's a big deal. Regional uh, co-location virtually in the cloud will be a massive deal. That's a, to me a, a secret weapon for Amazon. So continuous improvement on the infrastructure under the hood. Then you got the incremental improvements around the database, Redshift. You're seeing Redshift becoming this API-like data warehousing model. This is kind of where the big data market really will explode. So to me, that on, and then on top of that is the, is the managed services. So again, managed services, continue improvement, some of the database layers and other stack and inside the middle of the stack and then ultimately down the lower end. So to me, great progress, great strategy by Amazon. You know what's interesting, John, is um, you know, Amazon makes these announcements uh, they've got first mover advantage in the sense that they've, they've, they've you know, got, they were first with the cloud, obviously. But 
take, for instance, their VDI announcement yesterday. Um, another thing that they're talking about a lot today, you heard uh, 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 Werner Vogels talking a lot about solid state disk. He said that, that magnetic disk is the new tape. So they're kind of late to that game. So Amazon seems to wait till they get its customer's feedback and come in uh, as the you know, semi-fast follower. I mean, I'm not, maybe not even that fast with, with VDI. What's your take on that, John? I mean, how important is first mover advantage in this day and age? Well, I mean, firstly, if you have large scale, first mover advantage will win. I mean, ultimately, you know, we had Martin Mikos on yesterday. He's a fantastic executive from Eucalyptus. He kind of had the quote of the century in my mind, which was open source 10 years ago, um, or quote of the decade, I should say. 10 years ago, he said, open source is only about uh, source code. Now open source is about not only source code, but about APIs and data. And if you look at what Amazon is doing fundamentally, that's changing the game. So to me, if you have large scale like Amazon does, first mover advantage on these, what they, these little features and these new services can scale, there's a lot of leverage there. So there's leverage in scale, so first mover advantage comes on the scale side. Um, and in context of that, look at what Google's doing. Google's been making some announcements as well around Google Compute. They are significantly far behind Amazon. Okay, on the developer traction. However, they have large scale. So Google is absolutely has pole position in this race, um, and it's when they get their act together. So that's interesting. So, so I, I liked your answer. Only uh, so I want to unpack that a bit because, so who's the competition? Is it you know Google and, and Microsoft, or is it really the on-premise enterprise? So for example, on-premise enterprises have been talking for what now a couple of years anyway about. Solid state disk, take that as an example. Take VDI, we've been talking about that for three, four, five years. So, relative to the legacy enterprise players, um, uh, my argument is that Amazon doesn't have first mover advantage from the standpoint of feature sets, but it doesn't need it, because it was first with the cloud and it's got, to your point, scale. It has first mover advantage relative to its big web scale cloud competitors, as you just pointed out, Google. So in a way, it's got first mover advantage where it needs it <laughs> in the cloud, and yet it doesn't have it maybe against the on-premise guys, but my argument is it doesn't need it relative to the yeah, on-premises I mean, guys, because to your point, they got scale. What do you yeah, think about yeah. that? So here's my take on that, one. You think that's, you think that's right I on? I think that's right on, but here's a good little nuance there. The word cloud is a completely different ballgame. Salesforce.com thinks they're cloud. Now they might have a SaaS model that's cloud-based, but ultimately it's not pure cloud in my mind because what Amazon has is pure cloud. Their differentiation is the scale, and so when they roll out a VDI service, for instance, that's a great example of kind of an old feature. We had Jerry Chen on from Greylock, ex-VMware. He's the godfather of VDI, and you know Sanjay Poonin at, at VMware is rolling his eyes, like, hey, welcome to the party. But here's the difference. They're taking a feature like VDI and they're commoditizing it, and it becomes a feature in their stack. Is that a massive game changer? No, it's just commoditization. So Amazon's strategy is very, very clear. Knock down the commodity components in that need to be in the stack and then differentiate on large scale and ultimately the new business models around developers. So to me, that will be the game changer. So I look for the similar moves from Amazon in the enterprise. That is, commoditize other people's advantage and shift the differentiation to where their assets are at large scale. So Sanjay Poonin, was that his reaction on Twitter? Or? Yeah, Sanjay Poonin yeah, so had a tweet, and he actually said, let's partner. I mean, he, <laughs> he's smart. Now that's good, now, that's yeah. good. So, so the, you know, welcome to the party, that's, that's sort of. It wasn't cliche. sour grapes, it's like, hey, this is great right. stuff for the industry. But you know what I'm saying, welcome yeah. to the party, you know an executive's yeah. going to say that, that's cliche. The partner angle's interesting, it's just Sanjay, he, he is smart, right? So I think one of the things that I, I haven't talked about this publicly, but I was talking to uh, NetApp about this uh, and others. Back in the day, Dave, if you remember virtualization, again, we weren't, I mean, I wasn't even covering it back then, but I remember when, when it came out, I was really interested in that. But the thing about virtualization is everyone saw virtualization as a direct threat to their business, okay? And the companies that embraced virtualization were successful. The ones that said, oh, I'm going to fight it, lost. So to me, I look at Amazon the same way, and I think Sanjay Poonin at VMware, is very, very smart. He came from SAP, saw the value of AWS in terms of getting stuff up and running very agile and fast, and it's, it's the same notion. People who look at AWS as a threat will lose. People who look at AWS as a partner, as an enabler, will win. I think embracing AWS as an enabler is really, really smart. Randy Bias at Cloud Scaling saying, hey, you know what, we should do an AP public API with Amazon, screw the OpenStack Foundation, let's co-opt it, and let's grow together. So, to me, Virtualization in the beginning was very threatening. The people who embraced it won. Amazon's the same way. So, you know, I mean, might be 
somewhat similar. Maybe the debate that, but I think Amazon is a winner, and I think at the infrastructure as a service level, well, they can so be the standard. When first when virtualization first came out, everybody said, maybe specifically, everybody said Intel screwed. You remember that, right? And that didn't happen. Virtualization, you know, helped boost Intel in a way, because because the market's elastic. But I would say this, John, if you look at the large players that were, you know, the operating system purveyors, Sun's gone, HP, IBM, you know, obviously not so much Dell, because they're reselling, but, you know, they embraced virtualization, they resold, but they were resellers of virtualization. They were resellers of, who were the real winners in, in virtualization? Well, I think VMware, I think EMC. NetApp. Yeah, NetApp, you're right. NetApp embraced virtualization in a way that, that allowed them to compete very effectively with, with EMC, but I would say they were sort of downstream in the value chain because storage was such a problem, so that was a smart move by them embracing it. A lot of the server guys, though, are now, particularly IBM and HP, are saying, hey, we're going OpenStack. That's our hedge for the future, because you know, why put the, the money in EMC's pockets? We're going to drive OpenStack as hard as we can. So Dave, we've got a great lineup today. What are you expecting? We're going to have uh, Ariel Kelman, who's the head of worldwide marketing uh, for Amazon, coming on. Uh, great to get his perspective. We also have a crowd chat going on, so ask uh, questions there. Watch live at siliconangle.tv. Uh, we're going to have some, some, some new startups that are going to be coming out. We're going to see launches. We're going to talk to some, some of the developers. Um, we're going to have uh, Red Hat on, OpenShift. A couple of uh, startups are going to announce they're going to come out of stealth on theCUBE, John. I'm very excited about that. We've got the CTO of MongoDB coming on, uh, Elliot Horowitz. It's going to be awesome to talk to him. Mongo's had great success. Um, and the big guest today is, of course, Steven Schmidt, who is the head of security at AWS. Everybody's always talking about you know, security in the cloud. Well, this is the man. This is the the number one guy at AWS on security. We're going to have him on theCUBE this afternoon. I mean, I tweeted out yesterday, it was kind of funny. I'm like, oh, the big hallway conversation is security, and it goes, that's ironic. How secure is that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, this is theCUBE. We'll be, we'll be going to be back with wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Again, Dave, just in summary, day three. Again, continuation of the same. A lot of announcements. Um, it's an API economy, it's a cloud economy. I think Amazon is demonstrating great value. Obviously, the developer traction is huge, and they are committed to, looks like, March down to the enterprise, um, at the managed services level, at the data layer, and also down on the infrastructure. So we're going to continue to break that down all day today. Stay with us here on siliconangle.tv, and we'll be right back here at theCUBE, live exclusive coverage from Amazon Web Services reInvent. Be right back.